What's going on YouTube? In today's video, we have the VM33 from Nearstream. This is a 2000 resolution 40 optical sensor camera that's completely wireless. You can live stream directly from this camera to your phone. You can control it from your phone to your MacBook, however you really want. There's a limitless options. Let's check out if this $400 camera is good. So first, let's start off with the unboxing experience. Now coming out with Nearstream, it is very simple, black and orange box or like a gray and orange. Very simple device. The device itself is a lot bigger than I expected it to be, which is kind of a deal breaker. It's a lot heavier, weighing at about under five pounds. Now, even though it is wireless, which is the main factor, we're gonna use it wired temporarily. They definitely have an app on the phone at least, and they have app control, which I'm gonna show you. Right there is the QR code for the app, or you can just download it. It's called Nearstream. Right there, just search it up. It looks like that. Once you open it, it'll automatically ask you to connect. We're gonna turn on the power here in the back. So it'll say current device, connect. So it's all here on my phone, I can control it. If you press the plus on the bottom, that's where you can add the camera. You have audio right here as well, which will show you. The microphones I believe are on top. So yeah, you can see the amazing quality so far. It's definitely way better with lighting. So I highly recommend to adjust that. So for this case, we'll do Streamlabs and we're gonna use a USB-C to C cable. And then after we'll check out software and see if it's wireless. I don't know everything about this camera right now, but it says we have a microphone input or aux right there and then a TF card right there at the bottom so you can record. Pretty cool, and it shows the battery indicator status. And this lasts, I think, five hours on a single charge or six hours. It's a fairly good amount. And it has a thread here at the bottom so you can mount it on a... All right, so when it comes to setting this up, we have a plus here that we're gonna go ahead and use. And then we can go ahead and add video capture device right here. And you could add source. And then once you add source, it'll show up here as one of the options. So we're gonna go ahead and add it there. And then you can choose one of the presets or you can make your own resolution here. 2560 by 1440. You change your own frame rate. You could change the color space, the input format and video range. So you got pretty much everything you really need when it comes to this, which is really nice. So you can see here, even on camera, so it'll look a lot better when I have some lighting on myself, but you can see here, it brightens it up a little bit and makes it look as best as possible. This looks really, really good. All right, so be able to control the device, you can still use the app here, it'll automatically go, but we still have it on our stream for this. So if you're gonna use it on a PC, it needs to be wired or to have it to it'll actually... So in here, it shows you pretty much device settings here, format, USB cable. So if you press the three lines, you can image adjust, which allows you to zoom. And this is an optical zoom. So it means you won't lose any quality Quality. Right now it's focused on the tripod here. So let me try to move out the way. That should be better. I wanna put some light here so you can see better. So you can see that really good quality. So this is 2000 resolution. You can see here it's in frame and it does have like an auto adjust focus. Let's zoom some more. So right now we kind of lost focus. I can't tell where I'm looking at. Let's go and zoom to 33 now and 40. So you can still see everything. You can see Spider-Man still. That's just crazy. Now let's go back to one. It is a slower zoom, but that's because it has a very, very long range. So that's the optical zoom. You can see here 2000 resolution, which is insane. You have auto white balance right here for a feature. So you have autofocus, auto exposure, auto white balance, HDR, anti-flicker, 50 to 60 hertz, brightness, contrast, saturation, hue, mirror flip. Right here you have filters, linear, stage, high contrast, black and white, soft, vibrant, retro. And then obviously the zooming right there. So those are the image adjustments there. You also have audio settings here, speech and general. If you use general, I don't know what that means. And then you also can uh, enable the 3.5 line or USB audio in, which will basically be from your MacBook or whatever. So that's how you use that. It shows the audio. It shows the audio. So that's how that one would be. If we press the plus, we have video source latency, low latency, standard, high latency. Then we have cut cross 
transitions, slide, edge, wipe, etc. We have camera input, 1080p high with a higher bit rate. It's about 3,128 kilobytes per second, all the way down to 360p, enable HEVC right there at the bottom. So that's pretty much all the settings right there. Um, you can press the live here at the top left to immediately go live stream to YouTube, but you have to log in. Uh, you can log into Facebook, Twitch, or RTMP. So that's how you live, or you could just straight up record and you can change the recording settings to be on your iPhone at H.264 or H.265. You can change the quality here, 1080p high, 1080p, etc. And then you can change the storage, which right now it's either on iPhone or an SD card, which we don't have one inserted, but I do have one right here. You get this little TF card right now, I have a 32 gig. You insert it here at the back. All right, so now that we have the SD card in here, we can go back to record and we have the VM33 local backup settings or the other version, which we're gonna try this one right here. You have the frame rate options, 25 to 30 frames per second. We're gonna go all the way up to 2000 resolution and it doesn't let you choose a higher frame rate for some reason. It's probably because I have a slower SD card in here. Let's try a 1080p, see if it does that. Yeah, no, it's probably just the SD card. Let's go ahead and start recording. So now we are recording the device itself right now after about a 30 minute test. It is hot to the touch, like really hot to the touch on the back at least. The rest of the device isn't as hot. That's possibly be due to the fact that it's just a battery and it might be a little bit of a hotter battery. So if you have lights going on and you have this in the back of it, it might get super hot, but no issues when it comes to lag, no issues when it comes to anything like that. This is the TF card. If you need to use it, it is not included. I highly recommend to get one of these SD card adapters so you can actually play back the video here and test it out on your device. So as you can see here, I have the video now, 2000. It looks good and hopefully it sounds good. We're gonna put some light on us and I'm just gonna pretend like I'm vlogging with it. But... Okay, so first off, don't move the camera. It has a lot of issues when it comes to that. Uh, second, the audio sounds decent. It's very, very clear for sure. It's not the best, but it's not the worst for sure. I've seen better, but this is what it is. Definitely, I wouldn't recommend to use it wireless, which is the whole point of it. Obviously, to app control is good, but if you're gonna have this stationary, that's the best bet. Instead of your camera, instead of your DSLR, you don't have to rely on battery if you have it plugged in all the time. All right, so now we are recording 100% off of the VM33, as well as the audio itself. Now, we have it on our phone here, so we can control all the settings as well as audio settings. We're in general mode right now. Now we're in speech mode. So let's go to turn on the air purifier here on the third mode, just to get a representation of what the speech mode can do, because it's more, more better on the vocals. You don't have to speak as loud, hopefully. I'm just looking at the audio recording right now, but with this on, on speech mode, hopefully you can still hear me really good without hitting the air purifier. Now we're in general mode. This is supposed to be just no noise cancellation. So that's how that sounds. Hopefully it sounds good. All right, so we're gonna zoom in a little bit. This is optical and I know you can hear the zoom. That is very close. So it's not focusing right now, even though we have autofocus on, but we're gonna press done here. Let's see if we manually focus it, if it'll do anything. Closer to anything zooming. Sometimes it focuses, sometimes it doesn't, but it's hit or miss. You can see it's definitely a wide field of view, which I really like. It shows here on the app for the volume. You can change the, you know, the volume of the microphone so I can increase it a little bit more if I want it to be more, or I could decrease it more if I want it to be decreased on the fly. So I can control everything directly off of my phone and still be recording on my MacBook or anything, which is super helpful whenever you need those things. Grab this SD card, see if it'll focus on it. It's not. So right now it's not focused at all. But yeah, it says here you can connect up to three wirelessly right there and you have tripods and stuff like that. But you can see here it's actually, it actually focuses pretty good when it's like kind of centered. Let's see if we can read this here. Yeah, not too bad. All right, so let me show you the setup here. So we do have MacBook there with the camera here at the bottom connected here to the near stream. And then we have a key light right here, which is basically lighting us up. And it's just that.
for you, then I would get it. If it's not for you, then don't get it. Obviously, the steep $400 price tag is a hard pill to swallow. The audio quality is decent. It's not the best. It's better than a lot of microphone from a webcam that I've tried out, but it's not the best, which I don't really care. I don't use this type of microphone anyways. I use my own dedicated microphone, which a lot of people do anyways. So it's good to have in case you need it in certain scenarios, but for the most part, you won't really need it. It's nice to have an extra option to be able to record directly off the device itself. That's super helpful. And then to be able to use one cable for USB-C to power and do everything is just game changer. Um, but 400 bucks, like I said, if this was 200 at most, I probably would get it. Then it being three to 400 is a little bit too much because when you get into that territory, there are other brands that I'm not going to say, but there are other brands out there that do a better job that I've tried out.